Hello everyone, it's Geesje. Welcome back. So today I have a video about a few tips and tricks that I saw here and there. And I would like to share this with you. The first one is coloring something that, that you don't like. So this is a gold color and I don't really care for that. And you want to make this a different color. And I, I think you can use acrylic paints, but alcohol inks or alcohol marker is a better way of doing it. So I found that two of these yeah, they're not really popsicle sticks because they're quite long. They fit exactly in here so that I can hold it in place while I color this. So these red ones here, I colored with alcohol ink. And the black one here, I used a Sharpie marker on. So a Sharpie marker works or a... This is a paint pen. This is a from the Sharpie. This is oil-based and they're also available in water-based. And water-based is not as opaque. So you have to apply a few more coats. So let's, let's try this one first. You have to shake it up a little bit to uh, activate the paint so that uh, the paint is all mixed up. And I'm just going to color it. I don't necessarily want it this color, but it's the one that I have available. And of course, there's different brands out there with paint pens. So use whatever you have. And I find paint pens work better than just adding acrylic paint with a paintbrush. Once in a while, you have to push the point in to have more paint come to the front. Of the paint pen so and you would do the same thing as with a sharpie and i would just put it in a container to dry like so then i'll show you the alcohol ink you just drip some paint on there ink on there this goes a lot quicker but you also use a lot more ink and again i will just have this upright in a cup then i have a silver dragonfly that I want colored, so I'm going to use the same color. You just pour it on, and this seems like a lot of ink that is coming out of this bottle. This ink lasts a long time. It goes a long way. And I will do the tail when this is dry. And the same thing applies for a button. Now we'll get a skewer, and I push it into one of the buttonholes, and I just pour the ink right on top. The thing with this is this ink goes to the lowest spots, so you have to kind of keep it rotating, otherwise you only have ink on certain spots and not on other spots. And again, I would put this in a cup to hold it upright. And you can do this with a lot of things that are have a smooth surface, like um, metal or plastic. And this way you can color it any color you like. So now we're going to add the corners to the book. And my corners are quite wide compared to the thickness of my cover. So when I put this on here, it sits very loosely on there. So what I did with one of them is I squeezed the sides already a little bit so that it is a little thinner and it fits better on the book. Here's a thick one. So I squeeze very gently and the other side. Now, now I squeeze a little bit too much, but I just put my pliers in there and just wiggle it back out. You also want to use two pieces of cardboard or cardstock or whatever you have. And so I push my corner on here. I place these cardboard pieces on both sides because I don't want to damage the corner by squeezing. I know I didn't use it before, but now I'm going to squeeze a bit harder. So I'm going to use, I'm going to squeeze the point first, which makes it sit secure in the corner. But see how it separated? So I can push this side that way because here you can see a little gap. So I'm going to now push this back in against the book. And now I can squeeze this side, not my finger. And if I see that it moved again, I will move it back because this one hasn't been fastened to the book yet. So this one will move back and I will add my cardboard pieces and squeeze. I know it's not perfect, but it's fine for the book I have here. When I added these book corners to this book, they were almost the same size, the same thickness. So it fit a lot better on a book like this. So my suggestion is that when you have book corners to go on a book, make sure they are kind of compatible with the thickness of your cover. So the last tip for today is where to place pockets in your journal. I used to put pockets and whatnot 
on one spread because I liked the look of it. If you look on the back of this page, it doesn't have a pocket. And if you look on the back of this page, it also does not have a pocket, but it has a good writing space. So let's put a backboard behind it. Now, if I would write here, I would come across the bump that the pocket makes on that side over here. So that's not very convenient to write on. Now what I do, when I make a journal, I make sure that the pockets are on one page, as in one paper. So there's a pocket here and there's a pocket here. So that when I want to write on this side, I can put my backboard in and my backboard protects me from the bumps of the pockets of the previous page. This way, the writing will go a lot smoother. The same thing on the other side, I would put the backboard on this side if I want to write on this page, right? Now, a page with pockets is never lost, as in writing space-wise, because you can add little bits and pieces of paper in the pockets and it gives additional writing space. Well, that was it for today. I hope you liked the video. You can leave me comments and questions below and we'll hope to see you in the next video. Bye.